release of the Apple Vision Pro, I thought it'd be fun to show how to create a product animation using Apple Motion with a 3D model. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to the 3D model down below. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. From here, we're gonna select the Motion Project. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave my duration at 10 seconds, and I'm gonna set my preset over to 1080p at 29.97. From there, we can go ahead and push open. The first thing we of course need is a 3D model. So to do that, I'm gonna push Command I to import it and I'm gonna locate from arcodes.com this 3D model they have of the Apple Vision Pro headset. From there, we can push import. When it first imports, it's going to be on its side just like so. Let's go ahead and take a look in our inspector to get the settings exactly as we want them. Firstly, you'll see that the unit size is set to automatic. So it's going to automatically scale up this model to what it thinks is best for the project. However, I don't really like the scale that it is set it as. So from there, let's go ahead and change it from automatic over to custom. And then I'm just gonna type in a value of 3000 for this particular model. Underneath that, you'll see the orientation. Go ahead and click on this down arrow to expand that. And we first want to rotate it on the X axis. I found that rotating it about 25 degrees was pretty good for this particular product. From there, we're also gonna rotate it on the Y axis. So I'm gonna just click and drag. Now this is just the primary position that this 3D model is going to be in. You'll notice that if I go over into my properties, our rotation parameter is still set to zero. So we can go ahead and offset that rotation by using these different values here. Now I want this to have a continual spin animation to it so we can see the entire product. To achieve that, go on up to the very top, up to behaviors. Then going down to basic motion, locate the spin parameter. Clicking on that, you'll see over here in our behaviors box that we have all of these different options we can adjust. I'm going to change it from continuous rate over to ramp to final value. That means that we can set a defined amount of how much this object is going to spin over time with this spin parameter behavior down here in the timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and just type in 360 degrees. So that means that over 10 seconds, which is the duration of our project, it's going to spin a full 360 degrees. However, you'll notice it's not spinning on the correct axis. Right now it is spinning on the Z axis. So let's change that over to Y, Y being the axis, which is with this green arrow. So that is going to be straight up and down in the middle. So if we push play, we now have our object rotating in 3D space around its original anchor point right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just bring its position down a little bit so it looks a little better in frame and that is looking pretty nice to me. Next, when you're showcasing a 3D model, it's important to have some nice 3D lighting on it. And that is where Apple Motion has a really incredible feature. If we go up to add object, you can see we can add a light if we wanted to, but there's also pre-made light setups. And I love using these for very quickly getting my light into position. So let's go ahead and first select the backlight effect and we can switch our entire object over to 3D. Now you'll notice that that has backlit our object, but it's just a little bit too intense. So let's go ahead and select all of these lights at the same time and then go on over here to the left side and find the intensity slider. We can bring down the intensity just so we're very faintly getting a nice little edge happening on our object. It should also be noted that if you wanted to add a nice color splash onto your object, you could go ahead and change the color here so we could give it a nice blue edge or something like that. But I happen to like how white looks for this particular product. Now I'm not super happy with the lighting just yet. I wanna add in a few more lights. So let's go ahead and go back to, up to add object light setup and this time we're going to add the standard lighting setup. So that's going to add some nice lights up here in front and more importantly that's going to give us some really nice reflection lights happening on our Apple Vision Pro. However I find that the entire thing is just a little bit too lit for my liking so let's go ahead and select our object then we'll go to reveal environment lighting. You'll notice that the 3D object environment is set to a full 100%. If I drag that down to zero, you'll notice how that adds some nice shadow onto our object. So I find just finding a nice middle ground between both can really enhance our product. It gives us this nice sheen on the glass, but it's not making it way too overly exposed. So now we have this nice spinning model. It's nicely lit, but now I wanna add some nice dynamic animation to really make this pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse these two light groups. That way we don't have to look at them. And I might even rename them standard lighting. 
backlight lighting. So to add some nice animation, let's go ahead and select our object, then go over into our properties. And what I'm gonna do is make sure I'm on the very first frame of our entire project, and we will click to add a keyframe under the scale. Then let's move on forward to the one second mark and click to add another keyframe. Now I'm gonna push on this back arrow to go back to the first keyframe and let's go ahead and just set this value to zero. If I push play, you'll see that we have this animation of the headset popping in, but it doesn't really feel that dynamic. It's kind of a slow and clunky animation and I really want it to have kind of that Apple feel where everything is so smooth and fluid and dynamic. So to achieve that, let's go to the far right side and locate our keyframe editor. You can also achieve that with command eight. In here, we'll see our keyframes and we can go ahead and select both of those, right click, go to interpolation and select Bezier. So now we have this basic S curve, which is definitely going to smooth out the animation a little bit, but I really want it to have a nice pop to it. So to achieve that, I'm gonna select the first keyframes here by clicking and dragging over, creating a nice box. Then we can click on this handle that's attached to those keyframes. I'm gonna push shift and that's going to lock this handle to this axis, which is going to give us really nice control. So I'll just drag this over quite a bit. Then we can find the secondary set of keyframes, clicking and dragging to create a box, selecting the handle, holding shift and dragging back. So now we have this nice sharp S curve and this is going to make our animation look really dynamic. Going back to the first frame, I'll push play and you can see how that pops in super nicely, almost like we're coming out of light speed looking at the Apple Vision Pro. Now, I don't really feel like animating this back out at the end. I don't wanna go through and add more keyframes. I just wanted to do the reverse of the animation we've already created. So let's go into the middle of our animation to five seconds. That's the middle of our project. And from there, we can go ahead and click to add one more keyframe, leaving everything exactly as it is. If we scroll down through our objects, you'll see that we can click on a down arrow next to the selected keyframes and there's a parameter here for after last keyframe. What that means is we can tell motion what to do after the last keyframe has been performed. So I'm going to go ahead and select ping pong and that means it's going to animate the complete reverse of whatever we have here at the beginning. So it pops in really nicely and it's going to pop out really nicely. So this can be a powerful way to automatically animate the end of your project without needing to re-add in those keyframes. And what's great is if I make any changes to these keyframes, those changes will be applied to the keyframes at the end of the project. So the animation is looking really nice, but I wanna add a bit of polish to the visuals of this Apple Vision Pro headset. Firstly, I'm noticing that it's just a little bit too sharp for my liking. So I wanna kind of soften those edges and add some depth of field. To achieve that, let's go on up to the very top and select add object, and then we're gonna add in a camera. If your project is not 3D, it's going to ask if you want to set everything to 3D, go ahead and do just that. Now that we have our camera in place, we can adjust a few things to really make this look nice. One is I kind of want to change the angle of view. Right now it's set to 45 degrees. I happen to like how something like 75 degrees looks. I think it just adds some more depth to the headset. But scrolling further down, you'll notice there's this depth of field option and we can even press show to show us a whole bunch of extra options. We have stuff like there, depth of field, blur amount, focus offset, near focus, far focus, all of those different options. However, if I adjust those, you'll notice that nothing is happening. Firstly, that is because in our render settings in the top right, our depth of field is not enabled. So go ahead and enable that. But even if I were to adjust the depth of field blur amount right now, it's still not going to affect the headset in the way that I want it to. For some reason, Apple Motion doesn't automatically apply depth of field directly onto 3D objects, unless we do this simple workaround. And I just have to shout out Hyra Puri for sharing this over on the Apple discussion forums because I could not figure this out for the life of me. So to resolve this issue, all we need to do is select either the group or the 3D object that we want to have the depth of field. I'm gonna go ahead and use the group. We'll go up to filters and you can apply pretty much any filter you can think of. Hyra Puri shared that they use the Gaussian blur. I'm actually going to use the prism effect. Applying that of course is going to give us the nice prism look, but if I drag that down to zero, then we go back to our 3D camera and drag up the amount. You'll notice now that our depth of field is working properly on our object. Now I don't want this to be super intense, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it down to something like 25 for right now and we could even offset the focus. So if we wanted to be closer to the camera, we could do that. 
just bring that in nice and close. Additionally, if we wanted this depth of field to be even more realistic, we could change the filter from Gaussian over to defocus. Just know that this requires more computing power so it could slow down your computer if you're using this method. But now that I've done that, you'll see that different parts of our image are blurred out really nicely. So let's go on back to the very first frame and select our prism effect. I'm gonna click to add a keyframe, then move forward to the end of the animation and click to add another keyframe. Going back to the first, let's drag up our amount slider. And once again, inside of our keyframe editor, I'm gonna recreate that nice S curve. So selecting both of our keyframes, we'll right click, go to interpolation, select Bezier, and I can go ahead and hold shift on each of these different handles, giving us that nice S shape. So if I push play, everything should pop in really nicely, and you'll notice that it has that cool prism effect as it pops in. Additionally, I wanna go up to my render options and enable motion blur. So now everything is kind of blurred, it's got this cool prism effect, and it's got depth the field all happening inside of our frame. Now you'll notice that the depth of field is just happening a little bit too intensely. So going back, we'll need to adjust our depth of field blur amount and our focus offset until we are happy with the end product. Once we've added in all the elements to have a beautiful animation and beautiful effects, I also wanna add in a nice tech looking background for this 3D object. This is gonna be super simple. We'll just go on over into our library. We'll go to our generators. And first, I wanna go ahead and apply a nice gradient generator. We'll just apply that to the very bottom. But from there, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this icon, which will change the background group from being 3D over to just a simple 2D object. That means that if we were to move this camera around at all, this gradient background would stay in the exact same position. From there, let's go to the inspector and we'll go into our gradient colors. First, I just wanna have a dark gray color. Then selecting the next color icon, I wanna set that completely to black. But I also wanna change it from linear over to radial. And then let's click on this down arrow and select adjust item. And that will give me some nice on-screen controls to adjust this gradient. It's going to be very faint. I hope this shows up on YouTube, but I'm just adding a very subtle glow behind the Apple Vision Pro happening in the frame. So this looks nice, but I wanna add just a simple texture over the top of that. So to achieve that, we'll go back over to our library and we'll scroll to the very bottom of all the generators and find the Trucit tiles. Clicking and dragging that, we'll apply that to the same group that has the gradient. We'll go to the inspector and in here, we can bring our tile size way down and I'm going to find color two, which is currently set to this white color, and just set the opacity of that down to completely zero. So now you'll see that we have this nice looking texture happening in the backdrop, but it's very, very subtle. If I wanted to animate this texture moving, we could actually go on over into our center parameter, clicking on the down arrow next to it, we'll select add parameter behavior, then select rate, and I'm just gonna set this to a value of 0.01. So if we push play now, it has a nice subtle animation to it, the headset is spinning around. It's got some nice depth of field to it, looking really nice with all of the different lighting elements we've added. And at the very end, it pops back to nothingness. So now that we're done with this animation, we could go ahead and export it out so we could use it in our video. To achieve that, we'll go to the very top right-hand corner under share and select export movie. And you can set these settings to whatever you typically like to work with. If you wanted the maximum quality, you could set it to Apple ProRes 422 or if you never added in a background like we did in this project, you could set it to Apple ProRes 444 and under color channel, set it to color plus alpha, and that would give you an alpha channel that you could use in your projects without having any sort of background behind it, which you could change out inside of Final Cut Pro. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and push next and save it to wherever you would like. To see how far the export is, you can click on this icon and that will show you the export progress. And here is the final product of everything we built inside of Motion. So you could definitely go in and tweak stuff like the depth of field or make the animations even more fluid if you wanted to, but that's just a basic basic overview of how you might animate a product inside of Apple Motion. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you how to build an advanced split screen effect for Final Cut Pro using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.